What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Show Me the Money Club. Today, right now, what's going on, Sergio? How you doing? Good. How are you? Waiting for, uh, uh, waiting for uh, our uh, stream to begin, so we can have some. How many topics do we have today, Chris? We have like seven, uh, eight. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Seven real topics. One real funny topic, and kind of, kind of want to see what your reaction is going to be to that. And We're then talking. anybody else who's watching, what is your reaction? Make sure you comment and let us know. Um, that's going to be near the end, though. Um, so we got a couple of cool things going on. Uh, first, we're going to be talking about our dash cam uh, giveaway, what you can do to enter this dash cam giveaway. We're going to talk about that first. We're going to go to our town hall meeting um, that we're going to be having next week and the following week. Yep. We're also going to be talking about everybody. Is everybody actually switching to EVs? And Harry, if you're watching this, you know, mm -hmm. let, let's get some RS, RSG uh, uh, Tesla Model 3s. How's that sound? I'll I'll go around <laughs> driving one of those. With the Rapid Fi. <laughs> yeah, there definitely. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about that because that, that's a, been a big thing. There's a lot of articles coming out um, talking about, you know, drivers <sighs> switching to EVs, especially with gas prices the way they are. Um, people might be on the fence looking at them. Uh, so we're going to be kind of talking about that. Um, also, uh, a TNC report coming from San Francisco, uh, so that's going to be interesting. Um, there's going to be uh, some unions and Uber agreement agreement on benefits and things like that, uh, which is an interesting thing as well to see because as the evolution of the gig economy goes on, you know, it's the wild rest, west right now, um, so things are starting to get teamed in in certain areas. So that's going to be one thing. Uh, Lyft is showing the money. Uh, to Gabe again, yes, yes. Week, which is crazy. Well, and then, a... uh, oh yeah, why not? And then uh, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash stocks where they're at, uh, and then then a little fun thing after that. So <laughs> whose idea? Whose idea was that to get paid in stock? <laughs> what was it my? Whose idea was that to get paid in stock? I know, right? <laughs> well, the whole thing is you want to get paid or you want to buy low and sell high. The only this problem is, is pretty low. If you bought, <laughs> if you bought at all. You're buying oh. high, and right now you're at the low. So yeah. they all, they both, they all made uh, new lows. So I'm like, okay, the pain hasn't stopped yet. It looks like, but yep. uh, maybe, maybe it's coming to an end. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. All right. So all first right. off, let us start with the dash cam giveaway. So what you see right now is what we are doing. So the time of when you can go out and actually do this is now over. So it's being that this is premiering on the 5th. Um, yeah. That is going to be exactly, um, let me pull this up on mine, um, what you need to do. So you can get a next, next base dash camera. We already gave one away. So congratulations to our previous winner. Uh, that has been shipped out. Hopefully you'll be getting it soon if you haven't already uh, with the holidays and stuff like that. Obviously uh, cool. it could be delayed, but it should have been shipped out already. Um, and hopefully you have it. So if you do, Email us, let us know what you think. But for the following dash cam, uh, the second one, uh, the basically we want to see the 4th of July weekend, what your highest earnings are. So per hour, not anything else. Like if you went out and drove the entire weekend, it's not that. We're looking for how much you made per hour when you were online, not necessarily um, utilized time, uh, but actually online time. Uh, so that's the big thing. So the criteria yeah. rules to enter, if you haven't already, you know, you're, it's the earnings Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, so it's July 1st through the 4th. Again, like I said, uh, the time that you can take those screenshots in the earning. Um, so if you only went out one day, that's fine. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is figuring out your per hour pay. Um, but with that being said, your minimum hours on app has to be at least five hours. So if you went out one shift that was five hours on online time, you know, during the screenshots when you send it to us, we'll see, we'll know. Uh, so yeah, you have to have a minimum of being online five hours. Uh, that's online time, not engaged time, active time, anything like that. Um, you got to send the daily screenshots to Sergio. So the email's right there, Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. And then only eligible days, like I said, we need the daily breakdowns. Uh, you can do the four screenshots all in one email. You got to include all your earnings. So you can include right. promotion, surge, bonus, quests, tips, whatever it is, only in-app though. Um, so it needs to be in-app. Uh, no cash tips, they don't count, sorry. Um, and then we need to just see the daily total 
earnings each day and the total online time. So then that way we can divide it by. Um, if for some reason you're not doing that fully, uh, it just DQs you. Uh, so like I said, um, make sure you have everything on there that we need. So essentially we're just going to divide the total time by how much you made for your per hour rate for this weekend. See how you did. And whoever had the highest, you're going to win the dash camera. So like I said, if you did one shift, if you did four shifts, it's, it's all going to see uh, what happens. So, so we're going to, oh, okay. go ahead. So, okay. It could be a total of July one, two, three, and four, or it could be just July 4th, right? So it could be any day of those four, July or it 1st. could be a total. Yeah, it could be any day, July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, or 4th. A total of any of those days, 1st and 2nd, or 3rd and 4th, whatever, right? As long as it's over five hours online. Okay, yeah. I got it. Okay, I mean, that's fair. And you know what? Uh, actually, it's good that you did online time, just for the fact that a lot of, uh, like in California, they show online time and active time on the mm -hmm. app. But in a lot of cities, they just show online time. I get a lot of screenshots to just say online. So online is probably better. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I see both. Um, I, I'm gonna program. I'm gonna enter this on the fourth because I'm planning on driving on the fourth a little bit. I'll uh -huh. do my five hours and win the dash cam. <laughs> <laughs> well, the big thing too is well, we're not um, eligible. <laughs> yeah, but the the other thing too is this is gonna kind of kill two birds with one stone. So we're hoping that quite a few people are going to enter this, at least sending your screenshots of your earnings over this weekend. Because, you know, we all heard uh, DK say that if you drive on average 20 hours or more, yeah. the average Uber driver in the United States makes 39 or more per hour. On, yes, and that's sir. utilized. That's utilized, which is, yes, it's a little different um, than, you know, online. But the thing is, you know, if for me personally, and I'm sure you, Sergio, from the moment that I'm ready to go online to the time I'm done, yeah. I consider that time that I worked because otherwise, absolutely that time, you know, if, if I'm sitting there for an hour waiting for a ride to come in, that's if I'm in my car at a specific space, uh, that's not me sitting at home or doing anything I want to do. That's not time off. Yeah. I don't consider. So 100%, uh, yeah, online time 100%, is pretty interesting. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent because, all these companies, when they send you those cute texts constantly, oh, work between 12 and 3 a.m., you make 31. Those are not online time. That's all utilized or active time. Lyft yep. does the same thing because the numbers could look great. Like, for example, if I work three hours, yes, for those three single hours, I could have made $39. But if you look at the online time, my app on hours, because if my utilization rate is, let's say, 50%, but I was out there with the app on for six hours, yep. not three. So if you take those three times 39 that you made and divide it by six, you see what kind of picture you're going to get. So yep. yeah, utilize time, active time is BS. That's like, you're always going to get some higher numbers. Even if you're averaging like 25 an hour, you're going to look like you're getting 40 an hour. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one, la one last that. thing too, when, when you're, when people email you the screenshots, if they yeah. have, online and active on their screenshot i'm getting just online. Throw, throw a second column in there to see what the active? Active oh, okay that's a good idea just, that's just good to idea. see what the the per earnings per hour because okay. you know putting it on a spreadsheet it's it's a simple equation yeah, 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 yeah. but okay, at least I that know. way then we can show the show the numbers and see yeah. exactly uh the differences there so that's why like i say i always look at online time yeah. granted yeah. you could be multi-apping um, so it's a lot different when you're doing that because, yeah, you know, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're spreading your time over. Um, yeah. but yeah, so like I said, cool. uh, if you want to win the dash camera or if you just want to send your screenshots, uh, to show what you did, um, and you didn't want to enter the dash camera, just let us know in that email. Um, so then that way, at least we could get the numbers and, you know, pay attention to the numbers that of the people that want to do it. But yeah, we are going to announce it on our next, uh, live, which is going to be, uh, July 12th next week. So make cool. sure uh, you send those over and try to get them in as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, we have pretty much up until then. So yeah, we um, had a good turnout for the first dash cam. This one probably will be as good or higher for the yeah. fact that everybody probably will drive on the weekend to a certain degree. And yeah. five hours online time is really not that much. I mean, yeah, you know, if you're not driving five hours, then I don't know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, okay. So let's give it away. Let's see what happens. All right. All now right. moving on.
We are doing also our next week, we are beginning our town hall panel for large market cities. So this is like LA, San Francisco, Miami, uh, Chicago, New York. These are large cities that we're looking at. We're going to do the following one, July 19th. We're going to do that for small markets. So yep. obviously anything but large cities. Um, so if you are interested in this and if you're in a large city market, uh, or a small city. I think we have everybody for the small city. If I'm yeah, not but backups don't hurt. And for the second one, right? Because we're going to keep doing this every couple, three months, let's say, or maybe who knows, depending on the reception. Um, so, but at least every couple of months to get the flavor of the country, what's happening, because we do get a lot of comments saying that you guys are in a big city. You guys don't know what's happening in small cities. Yes, you can make money in the big cities, but in the small cities, we have to drive 10 miles to pick somebody up. There is no surge. There is no incentives. Well, we want to hear from you guys. So mm -hmm. I am short drivers, definitely, for the big cities. Um, specifically, I need a driver from New York City and not the suburbs, New York City inside where different TLC regulations are you know, in, in force. I would definitely love to have somebody from Seattle because, you know, they have their own higher, much higher rates. I mean, almost double pretty much the country when it comes mm -hmm. to mile, miles and time. I have L.A., I have Chicago, I, I have, I, I, I think I have D.C. So, you know, San Francisco, push comes to shove, we can get Gabe. But we're going to try to advertise this on Facebook pages, social media. So I need a driver from New York. I need a driver from, let's say... Uh, um, I definitely need a driver from New York and Seattle. If we can get those two, I think our big city roundup will be fine. Uh, okay. And, you know, but yeah, uh, please, please email me. It's on the bottom of the screen, Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. And yep. I will respond you to you and then I will put you on my list. Then within uh, maybe a week of uh, the first um, town hall meeting, I will email you with the questions that we're going to have. Plus, I will follow up with a phone call with you. So make sure you include your phone call and your uh, cell phone and, or any kind of phone you want on your response so I can contact you easier, um, you know, introduce myself and then make sure that you guys are on. And Chris, yeah, mentioned that they don't have to be on camera. We would prefer you to be on mm -hmm. camera. But if you don't want to be on camera, you don't have to be. Exactly. So it, that is one of the big things. See, I know some people out there, they just don't want to be on camera. They're nervous or whatever it might be. Yep. Um, but yeah, if you just want to like get on, voice your opinions, voice your thoughts. Um, and then the only other thing, too, I know a lot of people say, oh, Sergio, you're in a big city. Yeah, you, LA. But I'm in Buffalo. Yep. I think that's the 71st largest city. And so it's not a big yep. city at all. <laughs> so uh, I know yep. the bargain. We, we do have a strong ride share. Um, amount though we do have i mean we do have quite a few drivers but we have people using it so like i yeah. can go out and I can make money so yeah. uh yeah <laughs> when it comes but to i mean no this is not just about who makes the most obviously the bigger yep. cities are going to make the more money i mean there's no doubt about that it's it's not you know because the density is there the ride counts are there i mean i'm sure la in probably one week does what buffalo does in a month probably right as far as ride count is concerned so to me, um, probably, I mean, yeah, well, just, if, if you look at a population density, absolutely. Because yeah. if you look Buffalo, Niagara, which means Erie County and Niagara County have about a total of 1.1 or 1.2 million people in yeah. it. Yeah. L.A. County, I think, is like 20 million. So yeah, it's really yeah, you, you so, should have yeah. at least 20x. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this town hall is not, by the way, who makes the most money? We know the bigger cities are going to make the more money unless you guys have some crazy incentives in small cities. But it's about the current state of rideshare, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what your what your complaints are, what you would like us to, um, you know, talk about as far as safety, all issues, right? It's just literally a town hall meeting, voicing our opinions civilly in a in a in a dialogue, and you know, hopefully, look, you know what? I'm pretty sure Uber and Lyft are watching this, or some intern at Uber and Lyft is watching this. <laughs> And to me, you know, hopefully they'll watch it and they'll hear the true concerns of the drivers from small cities and big cities. Yep. And we want to keep doing this. And um, I hope it's a success. I hope everybody turns up and be cordial and civil. Because, again, I said this before, Chris has the mute button. Um, I will have a couple of beers during the town hall meeting. So, you know. I think we'll yeah, have it's a gonna good be, it'll be it'll be open yeah. as long as everybody respects each other. 
Um, with that being said, anybody interested, email Sergio, Sergio at the Yep, please. Um, so moving on. Yes, sir. So where do you want to go? So Talking about whatever, the, uh, whatever you want to go. All right. Well, let's talk about now a lot of drivers are yeah. looking at or are already switching to Tesla or EVs when it comes to being a rideshare driver. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's a lot of reasons why. There's a lot of plans coming from Uber and Lyft. There's a lot of articles coming out from uh, this whole thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah. first, off, first off, let's ask what are your thoughts when it comes to an EV, when it comes to getting one and then rideshare. Okay, so I've done the numbers both ways. Um, EVs, just because gas prices are high, are not automatic money makers. However, I have few friends that one in LA, one in San Francisco, which we're going to talk about shortly. If you own the EV, you don't have some outrageous payment or a weekly rental amount. Because once you get locked into that weekly rental amount, which Uber is pushing, you know, through Hertz, you automatically have to drive full time, literally 50 hours, 60 hours a week, just for the fact that if you're averaging 25, 30 bucks an hour and you're in a big city, which you should, um, you're automatically spending 15 to 20 hours just to pay for the rental and charging of the car. So to me, you automatically seriously are in the category of, you know, um, full time driver. If you're going to do it part time just because you want to drive a Tesla and feel it out, just make, you know, 500 bucks for the car that's going to run you per week and make another 500, drive 20 hours, whatever it's going to take you. You know, you want to look good. Yeah, that's another thing. But if you truly want to make money, um, that's fine. You know, um, I want rentals are not my recommendation. Um, we had Gabe, who's our EV specialist. He owns a Tesla three. He owns it. He paid for it already um completely different story because the uber lift uh uber hertz rental deal with the taxes and with the insurance and everything else will run you about 500 bucks a month so don't look in your app see that 335 and get get suckered into it plus 100 bucks for charging at least that's 600 bucks that's a lot of money if you had a you know five eight year old prius with 50 miles a gallon gas mileage, I think you're going to do a lot better instead of paying the 500 bucks a week. That's two grand a month. That's a lot to pay to, to do ride share. But as Chris said, there were a lot of articles. One was written by our good friend Jackie Davalos at Bloomberg. Um, and then a whole bunch of copycat articles came out with some ridiculous claims, which you know we will touch upon. Um, some lady said uh, her tip amount for the month went to $2,600. I was like, $2,600? Who the heck? <laughs> just just a tip, she said. There, look at this headline from the Business Insider. An Uber driver says she more than doubled her monthly tips to $2,600 after swapping her Toyota Camry for a Tesla Model 3. And this same driver, by the way, in this article, claimed by switching from to her Toyota Camry, which she was spending $600 a week on gas. Chris, come on. <laughs> Wait. How is that possible? How do you, how do, you do in, in Toyota Camry? Even I if you're doing, know. like, even if you're doing, I mean, you're only allowed a certain amount of hours and then you have to go off. So um, even if you're maxing out the amount yeah. that you're online, can yeah. you even do $600 in gas? On a a week? Memory, yeah, a that's week? $90 a day. So in today's California prices, that's about 13, 14 gallons a day. And I don't even think Toyota Camry gas tank is that big. <laughs> no, you know I, think, I, mean? I think maybe like, I think the Camry might be like 10 15. or 11 gallons. Okay. Well, let's say it is. Oh. So that comes to like 90 bucks a day in gas. So I know Camry, let's say averages 30 miles on average highway and city, right? It's a pretty efficient car. It's a four cylinder car. So um, 13 gallons, 30 miles. So this, this person is driving three to 400 plus miles a day. That's a lot. So easy. Yeah. Easy. So like, are, you, like, are you, are you dropping somebody off and then just continuing the ride all I the guess. way I until guess. you get somebody else? No, yeah, pull so, over. Wait a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm not buying this, this headline. I'm totally not buying. Uh, and this headline, by the way, in this article, she said 
her tips, monthly tips. This is just tips, people. So just her tips will pay, mm -hmm. will pay. So 500 a week for the car plus six, another 100 for charging, let's say. That's 600 times four, 2,400. Did just say her where, tips pay for the rent. where this was? Yeah, Lancaster, California, up north from me, like 20 miles okay, from so, me. Okay, so it's, it is Kelly. Yeah, uh, it so is Kelly. I, I can understand the whole gas aspect. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to, know, not, I'd like to not, see a couple not, of screenshots not, of these these yeah. monthly tips. I I weekly yeah. breakdown. <laughs> I got in touch. I got in touch with Jackie, and Jackie goes, "Ugh, at least they mentioned my name in the article." So it was a cut and paste. <laughs> there was another one Yahoo article. So this lady got her ten minutes of fame, and I'm not buying it. I I still think you could do so much better if you owned your car a Prius or a hybrid, even with okay, high gas prices. Even with this high gas this prices. isn't necessarily ad. I mean you're looking at one aspect of it um, yeah. when it comes to, to an EV and that is using the rental. Yeah. But what about if you wanted to purchase one? Let's say your car is, you know, at the point where, yeah, it needs to be upgraded. Yeah. Um, maybe you drove it in into the ground. Maybe it needs yeah. real, real amount of work that you just don't want to sink into. Yeah. So if you're looking at a new car, what's your thoughts then when it comes to that? C certainly or, makes more you? sense. Certainly makes more sense. In Jackie's article, by the way, um, there were two drivers. One of them was this lady who was doing the rental, Uber rental, right? Another driver did exactly what you said. His car was beat up. He's also, I think, in L.A. I'm pretty sure he is. Um, he went to the Tesla website and ordered himself a Model 3. Okay, with monthly payments of nine hundred dollars, and he bought one. He bought one. So, just in its own, nine hundred is less than half of what the rental is going to run you, right? So you're not you don't you're not going to be forced to driving full time to pay for anything. And that driver claimed not only he, he you know in one week he's getting the nine hundred back that he's paying for the car, but the three weeks of the month is basically his profit. Right. Mm -hmm. So he did buy one and it's 900 versus, um, you know, 2600 for the rental for the month is 900 still too high, probably. But then your savings are going to kick in the gas savings, the maintenance savings, because at the end, you know, if you do a four or five year loan right at the end of four or five years, you're going to own the car. You still have some asset, not like the rental. So, yeah, in that case, it makes sense. I mean, I don't know if nine hundred dollar a month payment is sustainable, um, because you know you could get in a crash. Because you know you could get in a crash and you're off the platform, or you know you could get sick. I mean, whatever. So, but he took it on, and financially, it makes a lot more sense than the rental to me to own the car. The yeah, best way, the the best way is what Gabe is doing in San Francisco, what one of our friends on the stream every week, we Zoom is doing. They bought the car for cash. Granted, not to, obviously not too many rideshare drivers have the 50, 60 grand laying around. You know what I'm saying? But once you do that, then your numbers become astronomically positive. I mean, literally, you know, you're basically turning your car into a cash cow because we know mm -hmm. the maintenance is going to be less because we know the gas savings are going to automatically kick in. But as a rental, I don't think it makes sense at 500 to 600 dollars a, a week. That's a lot of money. And yeah. it forces it forces you to automatically to become a full time driver. Again, I th I think as an owner, to, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but I think when it comes to the some of these articles, I don't think they're talking about drivers who are going for the rental option. I think a lot of them are also buying outright. Um, yeah, but you know what you know what the article really, said, right? Uber said well, they're, fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. They said yeah. drivers signed up or or are using the Uber Hertz rental deal. That's quite yeah, a bit of increase also, from last year. It's like up 200%. So. Yeah, but there's also, besides that, though, there's also people who are looking at buying yeah, yeah. an EV, yeah. whether it's a Tesla, whether it's something else. So well, I, I think, think it, makes, it makes a lot of sense. A yeah, lot of sense. So for my opinion is um, I'm, I'm pretty much kind of the same thing where renting does not make sense unless yeah. you want to rent it and see what it's like yeah. uh, because you can't really go to the, to the um, dealership and like test drive it because they don't really have dealerships. So um, that's one thing. If you want to like test it out, see what it's like at that point, then, you know, one week, whatever, uh, that's kind of the business of doing things when it comes to it. 
Yeah. But yeah, if you are, you know, some th- someone who is coming to the end of the lifespan of your vehicle uh, and you need a new car, well, yeah, I think doing something like an EV might be very possible to yeah. uh, to you, especially if you have a place where you can charge it. That's that's one of the big things. A lot of people who might be driving don't have the ability to charge it, say at yeah. home uh, overnight or something. Uh, so something like that is uh, going to be a deterrent. Uh, but there's always different things that you can do if that's the case. Um, no, I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's, charging, there's charging everywhere these days. I yeah, mean, it's but, not as, as tight as it used to be. And also yeah, a lot of a lot of power companies are paying. Yeah. No, but a lot of power companies, like in my area, the power company is actually subsidizing the installation of a 240 charger, which is the, not the super fast charger, but if you charge your Tesla overnight, it will be full by the morning in eight hours. So yeah, but that's you know. a, that's that's Cali- that's a California. Yeah. Not all states are doing that. No, so there, there are that's things true. that um are deterrents to people when it comes to it. And then also, you know, if you're looking at Tesla Model 3, the fifty thousand dollar price tag does Go, make you go Ooh, i'm not sure about that it has but, gone you know, up by the way you know that right something that yeah. i am kind of contemplating because my car has 180 something thousand on it now uh, so it's it's getting up there and uh i mean it still runs good so i'm gonna still fix it up but when yeah. it comes time you know one of the that's gonna be kind of one of the things that i'm gonna be looking yeah. at it and say all right is something like a tesla um going to be the smart way to go or is it going to be something where I still want, you know, my, I love the Jeep Grand Cherokee. That's what yeah. I have. And it's great for, for a family of four yeah. Uh, yeah. because we can fit everything in, everybody in, and, you know, it's good to go. Um, yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, if you're doing ride share, yeah, an EV makes true sense if you're yeah. at that point. But I wouldn't, the other thing too is I wouldn't say go out and buy an EV just to do ride share no. because no. that's just not, smart either because yeah. unfortunately with like deactivations and things like that um you know a car crash as you said could take you out of the yeah. game Anything, and yeah. then, then what so yeah um, no but the other thing is um it's not just a tesla anymore right there's so much more competition out there when it comes to evs like our gabe who's our ev expert did a analysis on the ford he did another one on polestar which is a competitor of tesla he you know there is a whole bunch of you know evs obviously the chevy bolt the Ionic is coming out, you know, Hyundai Ionic and then uh, Kona. I mean, there are so many more choices. You know, if I were to do it, you know, I would probably go out there. You know, I wouldn't jump into a Tesla because there is same. You can get the same range in pretty much any other car other than the brand identity, obviously, you have with, with Tesla. But there are so many cars out there that are more reasonable, especially um, I read the headlines the other day. Chevy Bolt has become the cheapest EV in the country. They I cut. They cut the price. Yeah. yeah, they cut the prices. Actually, you can <laughs> literally with tax credits, you're down to twenty three thousand dollars for a full Chevy Bolt that gives you two hundred and twenty, two hundred and forty mile range. Well, no, nope. but <laughs> it's half the price of a Tesla, so and half mm-hmm. the payments of a Tesla. Yeah, I would. I, I would. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, I don't okay. like it. That, but, that's me uh, personally. I mean, no, it, no, it, I, again, for price. If you know, for for yeah. certain things. Hey, that if you want to get a Bolt, cool. I have no, no quite for me yeah. drive. I would never drive that thing. Just like okay. I would never drive one of those damn smart cars. Hell to the F and no. <laughs> yeah, okay. No. And, and you know, what I'm saying is that there is more choice these days. You don't have to be yeah. just stuck oh, yeah. with Tesla and with and a $900 no, no, payment. No. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would also recommend saying with some of these car manufacturers, you know, look at everything, look at the fine Absolutely. print because there are some vehicles that you might think they're EVs. They're really hybrid and they're not really like, they don't have that range. They'll, they'll have like a 20 mile range or something just in all electric, which yeah, is exactly. great if you're not doing ride share. If you're, bi- you know, if you work, you know, five, 10 minutes away from where you live. Sure. That's, that's great because you can go all electric and, and your gas tank yeah. isn't going to be affected, yeah. but you want to make sure you pay attention to some of those. Cause when it comes to, to those, they, they can really kind of fine tune their advertising to make it yeah. seem when in fact it's not like the new uh the 4xe i think it is for grand the grand cherokee like if you look at it it's it's a hybrid and they have an electric engine they have a, a gas tr- uh, powertrain engine too and you're only getting like 20 miles or 24 miles or something yeah. on an electric charge and then you can you know kind of do like the hybrid um but it doesn't even get that better of a gas mileage yeah. compared to what i have in 2013 so yeah. 
Um, it's always something if you are looking for a new car, make sure you pay attention. Yeah, I mean, the idea on this one was we're hitting on the articles that these a lot of yep. drivers are switching. Uber set up 15,000 drivers are testing the rentals out, which is a huge increase from last year. And they're hoping that it's going to be higher and higher. Um, just do your numbers, just like I always say. Just because it's an EV does not mean that it's going to be profitable for you. Make sure you're profitable. Do your numbers. And, and you know, $600 a week is a lot of money. And it's going to require, especially in smaller cities that are not busy, require a lot of driving just to pay for that rental. Mm -hmm. So, you know, compare do your comparison shopping, not to buy the car or rent a car, but, you know, what your profit margins are going to be if you do an EV for 600 bucks a week or you can do a regular gas engine rental for 230 bucks a week with unlimited mileage so do your numbers just because it's a tesla don't get blinded by oh it's a tesla i'm going to drive a tesla and i'm not buying that 2600 dollars tip article whatsoever i mean I that's screenshot screenshots uh, yeah. nothing happened <laughs> yeah exactly we always say that screenshots or it never happened and it would be very interesting to see the screenshots of earnings right mm. I mean, yep. she goes, if she's making 2600 alone in tips, think about this, Chris, right? And obviously, she did a shit ton of rides to get to 2600 bucks, right? Oh, for sure. So if you add, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she's doing 120 to 150 rides a week. Because 2600 be. in tips, unless somebody tipped her two grand, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever. So <laughs> well, they're, to saying, me, they're saying per month, like a month. Unless this is one month that you did and somebody paid, uh, yeah, that, that's the only thing. Okay, but that's $90 um, in tips. And you know how stingy Uber and Lyft passengers are. Not every passenger is going to tip just because you're driving a Tesla. You know what I mean? True, but not so only that, that you're also, they're also capped. Yeah, 90 bucks a, a Uber, day in tips. Uber, Uber okay. caps it, so. Yeah, yeah, but 90 right. bucks a day in cap doesn't matter. So I would love to see the screenshots. And if we do get it from Jackie, I will we'll make a little bit of spin it, snippet out of it. Because mm -hmm. I'm not buying those numbers. So bottom line, calculate your numbers. Make sure you're profitable. Just because it's a Tesla doesn't mean you're automatically going to be profitable. Yep. All right, yep. moving on. Uh, let's uh, look at, you know, there's a TNC report coming out from uh, San Francisco. That's so it's pretty interesting. Uh, this is something that you you had picked up on. So if you want to, you know, yeah. talk about this a little bit so more. So this article, literally, if you look at the date on it, it came out June 30th, which is a couple of days ago. Um, uh, it basically said um, that TNCs are a disaster, which, you know, um, they add to congestion, they add to pollution. We know, you know, th there have been s straight up articles like this before that Uber and Lyft came with the promise of, yeah, we're going to have less people driving their private cars, but then we're not going to tell you that we're going to oversaturate the marketplace and have thousands of thousands of drivers idling all over the place. New York figured that out. Of course, they figured it out and they capped a number of cars. But in most cities, the cars are not capped. There could be thousands of thousands of cars just idling, burning gas and sitting there, you know, to uh, take care of the demand. But in this article, two people were directly blamed for this. Now, obviously, this could be a little bit, you know, political showdown. The ex-mayor of San Francisco, Edward Lee, who actually a lot of the um, city council was saying that, look, let's not let these guys run the show. But Ed Lee was saying that, no, we want high tech in our city. You know, we want to just basically give him the car launch, let him do whatever they want and look where we ended up. Um, and then the mayor after that, same thing, which is Mayor Breed, two very Uber and Lyft or TNC friendly mayors. They basically overruled the city council saying that let them run, let them break every law that they can because we love high tech and they bought it hook, line and sinker. Now, did Uber and Lyft have something to do with it? Probably, but I don't care about the politics of it. This article basically says, you know, TNCs are not doing justice to the cities. They're adding to congestion. They're adding to pollution. And in the paragraph on the right, I'll read it for you guys. Researchers have studied TNC's effects on individuals' travel behavior and congestion, among other factors, safety and labor. Their findings show that TNCs shift people away from other means of travel, including walking, bicycling, and transit. TNCs also generate more car trips, thereby increasing congestion. TNCs circulate on streets frequently with few or no passengers, 
induce travel and com compete with public transit instead of supplementing it. This is in turn results in increased vehicle miles traveled and congestion, even when accounting for multi-passenger shared or pool rides and TNC options. So it's, it's it, you know, and, and it seems like the political winds are kind of turning a little bit in San Francisco and we'll see where this goes. But, you know, I, I think, you know, on the, on the next topic or, or, or one after that, we're going to hit on, you know, Uber's situation in Australia. I think a lot of cities are figuring this out, saying that, um, you know, a lot of these cars are just idling, driving around, looking for ride requests, and we don't want it. They're adding to nothing good, and they're taking people away from public transit. Although on that one, I think I'm kind of disagreeing now. I think I see a lot of people going back to public transit just for the fact that the fares have gone up so much, you know, Chris? I mean, mm -hmm. in the old days, 10-mile ride used to be 10 bucks. Now, 10-mile ride is 35 bucks, right? I mean, yeah. Uber and Lyft also becoming a luxury now, as opposed to, because if you are doing, if you switch to Uber and Lyft and left public transport, I think you're going right back to it now because um, affordability is just not there anymore when it comes to just private rides. Because yeah, the, uh, and also with inflation things yeah, going up, yeah, people exactly, are still reacting exactly, where they're spending. Yeah. You know, one of the big things is if you could get somewhere a little bit later, yeah. but it's going to cost you a lot less. You know, that's yeah. something that you're going to take into account, um, yeah. especially when it comes to, to to Uber and Lyft versus yeah. you know the bus or yeah. you know something else, yep. uh, carpooling, whatever it might be. So there's still definitely uh, some some missed opportunities here, though, when it comes to uh, other areas. So like when it comes to not just TNCs, like they've obviously capitalized on, you know, missed opportunities in the past. That's why yeah. they're where they are today. Uh, but I think when it comes to, to city focus and things like that, there's plenty of missed opportunities. Um, and I think they're going to probably try to overcorrect this at this point now, yeah. uh, as we see in other, other places. Um, so I think, uh, but cats, be, I mean, cats out of the bag. Cats out of the bag. I don't think you're going to stick it back in there. You know, this is when they say TNCs, by the way, factor in also the delivery side of the business, right? DoorDash, all DoorDash drivers driving cars, all Instacart drivers driving cars. So that's, you know, that's quite a bit of cars out there, you know, trying to service or waiting for requests. So, mm -hmm. yeah, partly, you know, politicians are always behind the curve, right? They either <laughs> over-regulate or under-regulate. So they underregulated between Ed Lee and Mayor Breed. They said, yeah, we love technology. Come on down. Didn't figure out because there were no laws when it comes to the books, right? On for TNCs mm -hmm. in the country or globally, literally, because this is a brand new industry, only a decade old. This is not like a hundred year old industry, but maybe they could have taken a clue or two from cabs, right? That's why cabs are regulated or their numbers are capped. Not everybody can be a cab driver or get in a car and drive a cab, right? So to me, it's like, yeah, there's 3 million drivers in the U.S. It is what it is. But I think there definitely could be a happy medium uh, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, the numbers of these cars out on the streets polluting and congesting traffic, all kinds of stuff. But we'll see. I, I bet you're yeah. right, though. I bet they're over-regulate now. <laughs> I, the the, the only right thing, now. though, is I wonder if this report takes into account uh, just number of cars on the road versus what are more EV versus gas um, you know, how many cars are actually just idling, doing nothing, um, driving around aimlessly. I hope that people aren't doing that um, because that's not the smart way to go. Just It's not, but a lot of people do. You know, we did that oversaturation thing. I mean, God, man, there is eight cars at every mile in L.A. I mean, eight Uber cars, eight Lyft cars. So, so you know, not that, all of them are on a trip. So Yeah, but that that's another big point, too, is this is going to affect more bigger cities versus other areas because yeah. you just don't have the same population density yeah. so yeah, density, you know, we, yeah. we just talked about how buffalo and la county um or niagara or buffalo niagara um, metropolitan area versus la county yeah. that is about 20 times so yeah. let's say there's a hundred drivers in buffalo yeah. when it comes to at any given time uh let's say then on la you got a 20 X that. So this is, this is just pulling numbers, you know, on average. So you're looking at 2000 cars versus a hundred. Um, that's the huge difference there. So yeah, if you're adding 2000 to an already congested city to an already congested area, population density is much higher, much greater. 
um, especially in per square mile or whatever, um, however you want to figure that out. Um, well, yeah, LA, LA, yeah. Have, have I mean, LA going. County, LA County is not that space wise. It's very densely populated. It's not that wide or, or deep or large, let's say. But according to the last count, which Uber and Lyft want released this, but the estimates are that there are over 120 to 140,000 rideshare cars. This is just rideshare in LA County. That's a lot of cars. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the, and in California, overall, you have close to half a million, 300 to 500,000 drivers, all of California, rideshare drivers. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. So, so I, th- I mean, it'll be, it, it's going to be really interesting to see everything co- try to come together because yeah. that's the whole thing like right now they tout it as go on whenever you want you know feel yep. free and that's yep. how they real the, like the the freedom and flexibility is their only real thing if you want to break yeah. it down we can have a whole different conversation yeah. on that maybe we, that's a maybe we'll do like a a, a a talk independent versus employee um you know on a different show but yep. real quick when it comes down to it that's pretty much when you look at everything the control that you have is going online when you want and then you know being able to choose the rides that you want at certain times because yeah. there are definitely um some issues when it comes to if you deny plenty of rides because you'll get ghosted you'll be uh put on the back burner time out uh you know if you cancellation rate uh these things can have an impact on you so you know it's it's this guiding hand that says hey you're gonna do what we want you to do but you have the freedom and flexibility yeah. Again, yeah. A whole different conversation. Different but yeah. if you take that away by saying, "Hey, you can go online when you want, but you got to pick one of these shifts," and then what happens when the good shifts are all you know being taken or something like that, or well, you're capped at, at a certain place, or you have to drive to go to a place that doesn't have many drivers on, yeah. and you can go on over there. So you know, then then it takes away that freedom and flexibility thing. Yeah. Uh, what are they going to be left well, with at that yeah, point? Yeah, but that's but that's why you know I want to have the driver from New York because they are dealing with kind of with that kind of thing. They're dealing with shifts that cap the numbers at eighty thousand, right, in Lower Manhattan or in the five boroughs. And to me, it's like, is that what's going to happen in every city now? And is are there you know because we clearly know drivers are choosing flexibility and freedom, turning the app on and off whenever they want, wherever they are. But then mm. in certain cities, you can't keep doing that. Like San Francisco is very densely populated, smaller than L.A. You know, that's why they probably did this study and came up with this conclusion that it's a small city. We have way too many cars doing nothing. New York, mm-hmm. same thing. Five boroughs are small, man. There's like 20 million people living in there. But, yeah, you know that's how New York not, traffic not is. So it's like you, you can't have that many cars in there. I mean, right? So it feels like it's congested in New York any day, let alone with the 80,000 Ubers and Lyfts, and there's like 13,000 cabs in New York. So I'm like, yep. that's quite a bit. So to me, we'll see. We'll see where the politicians go. They'll probably over-regulate. And, uh, All right. And speaking of regulations. Yeah, let's do that. Going to Australia. Another... You know, we do have a viewer in Australia, right? Because I was emailed this by a viewer from Australia. Nice. Well, yeah. If and he said, right uh, now, yeah, it's, it, yeah, I, I, I think... I think um, this is what's been going on in England, London specifically, in a lot mm-hmm. of European cities, governments are at Canada. This is happening in a lot State of, uh, are, yeah, they're doing this like Massachusetts. Yep. yep. Um, well, they overruled it. They overruled Ubers and Lyft uh, clone for um, Prop 22. 22. Yep. So, you know, there's a lot of pushback coming. And um, so what happened is that this, this um, viewer in Australia sent me this, but he also sent me, from his own app, he's a driver, by the way, from his own app, you know, all the screenshots, but it wasn't legible, so we're not using it, but it basically breaks down to this. He said on the introduction of himself that the government that existed in Australia, Uber was has been negotiating with them for three years, but they were not labor-friendly government. Two months ago, a labor-friendly, let's say left-wing government won the elections in Australia. And the second they won, and the prime minister now is a very union-friendly person, supposedly, in Australia, Uber went to the negotiating table and made this deal immediately because they knew the hammer was about to come down with the new government, right? So for three years, they messed around, negotiated. They couldn't come up with anything, but they were breaking the laws and doing whatever they wanted to do. But with this government, within a short period of time, they went to the table and, you know, inked this deal. From my understanding, this deal is pretty much 
uh, a carbon copy of what is taking place in uh, in Seattle, right? Higher rates, guarantees. But this was good. This goes a little bit further. This allows in Australia, not other places. This allows the drivers to unionize on their own, which Uber and Lyft or any other company is violently against. I mean, they don't want. Yeah. They won't even release, you know, you know, in the like there was four, four or five years ago, there was a push on them to release the database of the drivers so they could contact mm -hmm. contact each other. And, you know, there's power in numbers. What did Uber say? Uber say the those names and numbers and, and, and addresses of our drivers at that time. We were drivers, by the way. Now, you know, we're earners. <laughs> <laughs> they said it's it's a trade secret. They called the drivers a trade secret. That's why they didn't release the numbers so the drivers cannot contact each other and create their own unions or whatever they need mm -hmm. to do. So this one has definitely a little bit more safeguards that Uber gave up a little bit more besides the minimum wage plus besides the guarantees. Uh, now on this one in Australia, drivers can unionize. Also, there's a tribunal for unjust deactivations in this part of it. Meaning if you do get deactivated, it's not going to be the algorithm saying you're fired, right? With a fraudulent passenger complaint. Mm -hmm. You literally have to go to a third party arbitrator and put your case on and Uber has to show up and you have, they have to prove besides what the algorithm decided that you really messed up. You broke their community guidelines or whatever the laws are, right? So there is quite a bit of positive things in this. Um, it's not into law yet. They agreed to it, but I'm sure once they agree to it, both sides agree to it, then it's going to be law. So I say, yeah, it's a good thing. I mean, um, Seattle, that's another you know city I want to talk to a driver because with those rates, they're definitely, I mean, swimming in cash, right? Unless, mm -hmm. unless it's, you know, look, all these cities that enforced these types of guidelines on Uber and Lyft, New York, um, Seattle, they Uber and Lyft was against it for a long time. They said, no, oh, yeah. it's gonna kill, it's gonna kill business, it's gonna kill demand. Well, they're still there. I don't mm -hmm. think it did. So I'm like, maybe it's a good thing. I mean, I would love to get paid buck 35 a mile and 40 cents oh, a minute. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? Would too. Yeah, don't yeah, give me absolutely. boost, don't give me and bonus, then... don't give me anything. Just give me buck 35 a mile, and yeah, oh, I yeah. Can make so, it I'd be I'd be happy with that. And I, yeah. I you know, that yeah. we've talked about that many times already. Yeah. You know, get rid of all the bonuses, the quests, the promotions, yeah. keep you know, keep surge because that's you know, that's a real time oh, demand. That's, that's what um, it is, yeah. so that's fine. Keep surge because it's not always gonna be there. It can be, but yeah, pay yeah. pay out accordingly. So on the prop great. 22, by the way, on the prop 22 that Uber Lyft DoorDash and a couple other ones spent 220 million to pass right on unjust deactivation there's supposed to be something like the one that they just passed in australia that has to be like a tribunal you can go mm -hmm. you know present your case and you know get back online um well it's not happening in california i can assure you people are getting deactivated right and left with you know fraudulent claims of passengers to get their six eight bucks back or whatever it's not mm -hmm. happening in california so Maybe Prop 22 is not the right thing for everybody. Um, but, you know, this Australian one in, in, in London, I mean, they have pretty much the same thing they have in New York. In New York, obviously, yeah. you know, London, the rate, London, rates are oh, higher. They're not, they're not, they're considered worker. Like, it, it, it's weird because it's, it's in between independent contractor and um, employee, actual yeah. employee. It's like worker yeah. or something. So they have certain benefits um, yeah. that they, they're allowed. And it's, a lot it's of, kind of the same thing like Seattle, how they have yeah. their setup. Yeah. Um, a lot of European courts, yeah. a lot of European courts are yeah. denying Uber of the IC status of their drivers. They're saying, mm -hmm. no, they're your employees. Spain is one. Italy is one. Obviously, yeah. England is one. Think, Belgium is I another think, one. So I'm like, mm, yeah, I know. think we, we need to have a, a one where we, we kind of go back and forth between, you know, show me the money club where we talk about uh, yeah. independent contractor versus employee because a lot of people are like, oh, I can go on whenever I want and I want to be an IC. But but the thing is, are you really? And, yeah. you know, you could yeah, be an employee and those, still yeah. go online and offline when you want. Yeah. Um, so th they can do that. Um, it, it, yeah, well, I think in we Seattle, should... look, Seattle, I think, is the perfect model of this, Chris. Seattle is the perfect model. It's not well, a small city. It's a city of 800,000 people. 
Yeah, but it's me, still though in its infancy. So we gotta we gotta see how it, it all works and all comes together because and that, I mean now the whole state has uh yeah. that particular uh so that is something that's gonna be interesting to see over uh as these things do get picked up. So like these yeah. these um uh places where you can go for driver advocacy, um yeah. all these things that are getting set up, they're still getting set up. So it's not yeah. something that's just automatically going, but so yeah. far from what we've seen. You know, on paper, everything looks great. In yeah. practice, that can be a whole different story. Well, so. it could be. I mean, it could be like that. Uber can say, oh, look, we raised these fares to double the country, a buck 35, 40 cents a minute, and my business died, right? Nobody's mm -hmm. using Ubers and Lyfts. It doesn't seem like it for now. Uh, and in Seattle, by the way, they don't have the restrictions or the scheduling that you have in New York, right? You literally have the same freedom and flexibility. You can turn on your app and go at three in the morning or one in the afternoon. There is no mm -hmm. scheduling. So yeah, I would love to speak to and see their earnings in Seattle from before this law and after this law, right? Um, so anybody in Seattle? I mean, it would be, uh, please, anybody in Seattle, email me, Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. I want to hear from you. And it's right. quite interesting. Yep. Now going going a little north of you, <laughs> we have yes. um, so, yes, some yes, yes. more lifts showing, showing the money, showing God. it. Bless and it. Look at that, boy, bro. Is it showing it? Um, so okay, yeah, I mean, this is like this. I mean, I, I I know I made Gabe the honorary chairman last week. <laughs> I don't know. I think I may have to let go of my chairmanship, give him the actual chairmanship of the club. So the <laughs> number on the the screenshot on the right is from a um, couple of weeks ago when Lyft showed him the money with the bonuses. So he made eleven hundred bucks in uh, 21 hours online time and 16 hours um active time did 80 rides all short obviously targeted the short ones he only drove <laughs> this is unbelievable he only drove 278 miles in his tesla model 3. i mean how profitable is that okay that's, that's i mean like <laughs> <one charge. laughs> that's, that's one charge right there because i think the the tesla is 300 and 30 I, I i don't actually remember what it is now but it's it's over 300 and then if i mean obviously with that being perfect conditions so maybe yeah. it's two charges but no but it, it's, it's about yeah he, he charges by the way at home he has a 240 charger so he doesn't even use the rip off tesla chargers mm -hmm. uh, so but if you look at his numbers 21 hours let's just take the online hours divided by 1100 that's about 55 bucks an hour active time 70 bucks an hour or 65 bucks an hour and this week, Lyft lost two hundred dollars on him, right? So when Not everybody that, you look at the per, per mile rate that you're doing, four dollars a mile. <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, four. that's book miles, so that's not total miles. I'd like to. Uh, he's probably tracking his mile. He, he should did. probably send us uh, what his his actual track for, miles for, are. For for that week, for that week, it was four hundred miles. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather know what uh, total miles are versus four hundred miles. miles. Four hundred. That's miles. different. So even yeah. if you do that, though, still that's to, to over you know, to close to three dollars a mile, three plus a mile. Yeah, so that's, that's ridiculous. Bad. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's stupid. Uh, hourly, it's stupid. Every which way you look at it, is stupid. The lift losing two hundred bucks is great. So I mean, so just, just look right here at these ride challenge bonuses. You got five hundred fifty three for the one, <laughs> three hundred and sixty. 361 for the uh, for the second week yeah and look at the so speed right bonuses there, under you it. know that's almost a thousand dollars yeah uh, between yeah, yeah. so ooh. well well the second week the said the, the screenshot on the left he had to work a little harder right so instead of 80 mm -hmm. rides he did 122 rides right yeah because you know how lyft has that staggered bonus system like you do 80 you get yeah. 300 you do another 20 you get another 100 you do another 25 you get another 100 or whatever right so he finished all of it Whatever he was given, he unlocked all those bonuses. Just between his bonuses and streaks, that was like seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> seven hundred and fifty dollars, oh, yeah. right? Mean, yeah, you got right here. It shows streak bonuses two hundred one, ride yeah. challenge bonus five hundred fifty three, yeah, seven hundred and then um, other bonuses. It says one seventy four seventy five. So right that's there, the, that's the that's the surge or whatever you want to call it on on, on lift, right? That yeah, they call still, it a bonus. That, that's yeah. that's the whole point. Oh, when, when by the way, to... by the way, let's look at this. See the second line where it says tips, right? Hundred and nine dollars and seventy two cents. Yep. And he drives a Tesla three. 
So how does that debunk this lady up in Lancaster that she says she got 2,600 in tips with Tesla 3? If Gabe, and Gabe is a cordial, fun-loving, great driver. I mean, he, even, only got, even, he only got $109 in tips out of 122 trips, right? Let's just, let's just, pl- th- let's just double that. So triple if it. your <laughs> online time is 30 hours here yeah. and you double that to 60, you know, yeah. let's, let's even uh, double the ride count to two, 240. 250 yeah. we'll just say yeah. 250 rides yeah. but your tips would be 220 yeah per week so yeah, yeah that's 800 I don't know. a month I mean, 850 or 1000 a month let's say yeah you'd yeah, be getting it's not around possible then. bro nobody's so, doing through 250 rides a week yeah i'm not quite sure <laughs> but <clears throat> so that debunks that, it but that, that's that one so 1710 dollars uh, gave clear uh, grossed he drove uh, 392 miles this week he drove 550 miles altogether. He told me, right, because the 392 is from picking up the passenger active miles to dropping yep. off the passenger. But his total, he again, he he targeted shorties and 22.56 hours. Let's say 23 hours of active time and 30 30 hours online time. Okay, so he's running about 75 percent utilization right there. So if you take 1710 divided by 30 hours, that's 65 bucks an hour online time. If you take 1710 divided by 23 hours, that comes close to God help you, 75 bucks an hour. Yeah. <laughs> 75 so, bucks. I, 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 I had fun with him. I said, you're making master plumber money plus, bro. I go, this yeah. is ridiculous. This is stupid. So, and that, that brings up yeah. the whole point of, you know, show me the money. Being, being smart behind the wheel and, and yeah. doing what you got to do when it comes to the promotions that you have. Now, yeah, for for the drivers out there that say, "Well, there's no promotions going on in my area," don't. Drive. Yeah, that, that I get. That that and that's that's where you got to really pay attention to when rides are coming in. But yeah. you know, this this is one of those things where it it draws up an issue because the whole reason why the rates are where they they are and the yeah. reason why the take is where it's at. Is yeah. not because of uh, that's what they just decide. It, you know, if you really break down the numbers, they're saying like it's still 75, 25. And if you include promotions into that, you yeah. still get that 75, 25 ish. Close split. to it, if it's not less. Yeah. yeah. If there's other promotions and things going on, that changes. Mm-hmm. But this is on the average as a whole because yeah. their earnings report said 27%. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go off that number because that's taking everything into account. Um, so if you're taking 27%, but the problem is you're also working at a rate where you should have, you know, a buffer zone of what the promotions are. That's why you and I both say, take away all promotions and pay the right rate. And then yep. that way, everything's good to go. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so this, those, I mean, for those two weeks, by the way, first the first week lift lost at about 220 $220 for that $1,700 week lift lost close to $350 lost lost like Ooh. i'm talking lost so yeah. for every one of gabe god knows how many people they, they had to yeah right so so uh, people don't get mad uber and lyft do lose money <laughs> occasionally and but, it, and but you know. when they're taking that 70 percent from you on your yep. ride they're giving it yep. to gabe yep they that's are right. they oh. that's, that's how it works take it from peter and give it to paul and that's how it goes man Yep. But uh, Gabe is an end to end this one. They gave him a better bonus structure for this week, but as 4th of July, he goes, I'm not going to drive. I'm tired. So <laughs> they gave him $650, $650 in bonuses, but he had to do six more rides. Instead of 122, he had to do 128. Oh, and he, he could have done it. He could easily do it. Oh, yeah. He goes, I, oh, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, you, you kind of want to take the week off. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So you, you got so three like, almost almost three grand sitting right there in, in two weeks of earnings. In two weeks, so, yeah. Good that's, job. And, that's, and yeah, let's that's say awesome. Is, is, that's awesome. If you add up the miles, that's like three charges worth. So Crazy, bro. Crazy. Stuff like that. So yeah, Crazy. there's ways to do, do it. And, you know, all right. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> all right. This is going to be a real fun little thing. For is this you. my surprise? This is your surprise, yes. Okay. So you know I how last week this, uh, we did uh last week we had that uh um pretty crazy um promo that was going on. I think it was like it ended up being like 50 cents a ride extra. Oh, 6430. 
It was that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 60, something like 60 that. rides was, for a 30? Yeah, it was something like that. Oh my god. Boom. No, that's bullshit. Boom. <laughs> that's bullshit, bro. Oh my god. That's uh, that. No, no, that can't no. be. That can't well, be. Come on. <laughs> 50 trips. Eight dollars. You give them more, 10 more trips, you get $4 extra. Don't spend that all in one place now. That's not a happy meal, bro. <laughs> no. You know, okay, so here's the thing. I posted, I posted this. I found this on Reddit. Uh, it, it's probably Photoshopped. Let's be real. But if you I don't know. That, that looks pretty real to me. I don't yeah, know. Even, even the highlighted, the, you know, the highlighting. See, eight is in bold and four yeah. is highlighted. I, oh, it, it looks it, pretty it looks real to me. Very I don't know. Legit. Yeah. It looks very, I would, I mean, break that down. What's eight dollars divide? I mean, it's what 20 cents a ride extra? No, less. 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 Um, 50, 15 cents would be seven and a half dollars. 16, 16 cents. Okay. Yeah, 16 cents. It's still, that's insane. Like, <laughs> how, how, do expect, how do you expect anybody to do that? 16 like, cents. You, you, yeah. if, if somebody, I mean, anybody <laughs> watching this right now, too, if you have something like this, yeah. uh, send it to me. Send it our way. But here's the crazy thing. So I posted this on my other channel because I saw this. Big money. And somebody commented and said that they saw that they have a quest for 20 rides for $10. There's that 50 cents extra ride again. So, I mean, I I would assume that would be the lowest if that's the truth. Like, if this is Photoshopped. But still, Uh, this is insane. (laughs) Like, okay. I want to know. The people, if you saw this and you're in your app. And they yeah. made a big deal about it. They're like, oh, choose your quests. Choose your Break promotion. Break your phone. <laughs> Throw your phone. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, oh, before Monday at 12 a.m. So this is the, the weekday quest. Uh, and you get this on the weekend after you probably drove some drunk hours to try to make that that other quest, the weekend quest. And you see Bro, this. Let me, Chris, this looks legit. Me? This looks legit. Because you got the Sorry, Monday 4 a.m. to Monday to Friday 4 a.m. part correct. Yeah, you know, but that's the whole thing. Uh, I mean, if, if I, I was know, man. This looks this, legit. If I yeah, if I was photoshopping this, the only thing I'd have to change would be the the two numbers. I could take yeah. a couple of weeks worth and and copy the numbers and then put them. Um, but no, but you know what? There is some math into this, right? Okay, look at this. So where it says fifty trips for eight, right? The next quest usually the total of the next quest, the two forty and ten, has to add to the eight dollars to the top quest, which it does. And mm-hmm. the next one, the next one, because this is how quests are done. This the next one thirty plus ten should match the 40 trip quest which is 40 for six and 30 plus 10 matches six i if you're going to photoshop this you have to photoshop all three i'm like oh yeah i mean you're i don't good, know you're I, is, you know, I don't know how much work went into this and i'm not even sure if it's worth it this is real bro this is i don't know uh, uh, how about this for the people watching this comment what you think if you think this is real or not oh uh, like God. i said i found this on reddit and i was scrolling through and i'm like you've got to be kidding me uh, like, like <laughs> why would you even offer the promo at that point like there's it doesn't even make sense you know it it's it's insult to you know, injury <laughs> on it honestly the amount of time that you would hit and wait time just to oh pick someone God. just to pick up your people for for the 50 or for the 60 trips if you unlocked everything uh and got the whole 12 dollars you, your wait time is going to be more than 12 dollars in your pay oh my god that's like i oh, hope it's, it's i hope i hope it's not real Although I hope not, not either. Know, I, I hope not because if this is real, bro, uh, we all need to quit this gig. We need to do something <laughs> else. This is this is 16 cents. Cents <laughs> a ride. Wow. All right. And then we got one last little thing before uh oh, well, we up. got some more things. So okay, um, I give up. Oh here yeah. are our so again, Sergio. Yeah, this looks, like, this, this looks like this this looks like the surge. <laughs> Blood red, bro. Blood red. You want to be paid in yeah. in stock again? In stock options? Well, uh, it, was sure. it was 23. It was 23 when I floated that idea. Now it's 20, so that's 15%. <laughs> so you lose. So if, if you got paid, let's say paid five shares, you'd yeah. have 100 bucks instead of 115 bucks. So that'll yes. probably piss you off. And on top of that, your $100 is now worth like $4 because of inflation. So oh, that's a no, we're not going to put that in stock. Come on, you can't put that on my head. Inflation is not my problem, that's the Federal Reserve problem. <laughs> no, but, I know, I'm just, I'm just so, playing. I'm just I know, playing. but but the, these three stocks as of Friday, um, so Uber just above 20, 
Still yeah. worth forty billion dollars, by the way. Uber market cap at twenty is forty billion dollars. Uh, DoorDash at sixty. So if you guys look at the charts, the graphs, you know when they say pictures worth a thousand words, a good chart should be forty-five degree angle from left to right. This one is a forty-five degree angle from right to left. So when you're <laughs> going right to left, forty-five degree angle, you know you're in pain. <laughs> so on lift. Okay, uh, do you see like uh, on the right screenshot on left where you see uh, there is like a like a hole, like right in there, there is a hole. That's when the earnings came out, Chris. Remember, it went down like some ridiculous 30, 40% that day. Yeah. And then it's been still like a ski slope sliding lower and lower and lower. And now mm-hmm. the poor thing is at 13. So now lift market cap is like less than $5 billion. So I'm pretty sure somebody will go scoop them just for the data that they have for the last 10 years of drivers driving, you know, all the miles they put on, mapping streets for them for free, that kind of thing. Because that's getting really, yeah. yeah. And plus they have quite a bit of cash, by the way, out of the 13, maybe like seven bucks is in cash. So the enterprise value, meaning the true value is like six bucks left in it for the whole business. I think it makes sense. Maybe DoorDash will buy him now. I don't know. But although DoorDash well, stock think, is also in the shit. I think shit. one of the big things is with, you know, the uh, the, in- the interest rates and the Fed uh, increasing yeah. the rate, you yeah. know, the, the the stock market benefited from that for a long time and it being big low. Time. It's yeah. Now that it's up and going up, uh, you know, now a company actually has to make money. So that's this, you know, you can't just get money, free money from, you know, yeah. stocks. You actually have yeah. to become profitable. So this will be a huge crunch time for these three companies right here for Uber, DoorDash, Lyft, and any other company that wants to go, uh, that that's going to be publicly traded or IPO or anything like that. You are going to have to be a company that is going to have to make a profit in order for your stock price to be better than this. Because otherwise you're going to see something like this and it's probably going to, let's be real, probably stay here until they hit profitability yeah well or lift is gonna be i think yeah lift lifts keep sliding but i think at some point it, it, it's dead money dead money meaning i wouldn't buy it uh, uber mm-hmm. is still for worth 40 billion dollars i don't know that's still i think way too high for what they do but um i i you know the picture is worth a thousand words let's end it there the slope yeah. is going the wrong way the slope has got to go on a 45 degree angle on a good stock that's profitable company it goes from um left to right I mean, on a 40 to 45 degree angle that's it you got to forget don't forget though that the the reason why it's at a 43 billion is because they have 32 million shares so there so is have, that right there uber no uber that's that's just that day's have that day's trading that's volume. the average volume that for uh, that day, it traded 32 million shares. Uber has 2 billion yeah. shares outstanding. 2 billion with a oh, B. Yeah. That's what, okay. yeah, $40 billion market cap. And well, that would explain that right there on yeah, why. For, so. yeah, it, yeah. But to me, it's like, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I, it was a bad idea. There you go. I accepted it. Uh, nobody yeah. accepts stock from Uber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I keep your eye on this. Um, it, it's, you know, I, yeah. I don't think, it's, I don't know if it's truly bottomed out yet. Um, again, like I said, this is something. Well, where... you could have slipped, but you could have said that like for the last year, every time lower, low, <laughs> lower, high, lower, low. It's like a, it doesn't look like a ladder, you know, like a stepping stone, right? You know, like going down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, I much. mean, it looks exactly like that, right? Just slowly, surely, bleeding, just going down the stairs. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, no. All right, so <laughs> with that, um, then let's wrap this up again let's for um, the next base dash cam giveaway. Uh, it is going to be announced next week. And uh, basically, earnings from Friday through Monday, from July 1st to July 4th, uh, you got to have at least five hours on the app. Send your screenshots to Sergio um, for those daily breakdowns so we can figure out how much you've earned per hour. Whoever makes the most is going to win. Include all your earnings except for no cash tips. Sorry. Yep, yep. Um, it's got to be all on the screenshot itself. Uh, and then also... Uh, just essentially sending the total daily with your total on, online time so we can actually see. And uh, we will... By the way, is this just for Uber X and regular Lyft? Or like, Whatever. because you know what's going to happen is XL or Uber Black, somebody will take that because, you know, their hourlies are higher anyway. 
So is, do, we, do we have something? Because you know, because that's you think, well, yeah. But here, but you know, if you're making seventy five an hour on on you know lift regular, damn, you're comfort, right about that. Yeah, uh, then you know. Uh, oh my God, Gabe, Gabe could have won this if, it, if he if he did it this week. He could have won the camera. Shit, maybe. But here's the thing. I mean, there's also promotions and stuff that are going on, and, and it's it's yeah. gonna just go and show the importance of using promotions stacking them as you saw none. with Gabe, as you see you know how how things go those um, are my promotions from uber and lyft this week including Ooh. the fourth like Ooh. you see the goose eggs the zeros <laughs> i'm not joking bro zero i got i got nothing. Uh, i had the the fourth of july for, for 10 rides for 80 bucks Take and it. then um <laughs> the other one was i chose the 40 rides um for the weekend i did 40 rides for um I think it was 135. I can't remember off the top of my head. That's so good money. Take uh, that money. You do that plus the surge. You know, you're triple dipping at that point. Um, so yeah, that's that's Take that's it. how you're going to get higher earnings. Um, if none of those earnings were there, you're just getting base rates. So that's the importance of it when you have the ability to and it, it takes planning, especially if you're doing it part-time. Full time, yeah. you know, sometimes you're you're at a you're stuck, you have to do what you have to do. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then also the town hall meeting, uh, again, we're going to be doing large city uh, markets next week and small city markets, basically what's going on in the world of rideshare, food delivery, whatever you might be doing in your area. Um, you know, if you have to resort to food delivery, if you have to resort to shopping, um, you know, package delivery, a different type of app, whatever it is, by all means, bring it on. Uh, we're looking for five, six people from different cities across the country, large markets again next week. Uh, hit up Sergio at Sergio at the rideshare guy.com. Um, and if you don't want to be on camera, you don't have to be. Uh, we do prefer it. So if you do, um, then make sure. Yep. And with that being said, make sure you smash that like button. Smash. And we will be live again next week with yep. uh, our first town hall meeting. Look forward to that. Um, anything last, Sergio? Um, uh, we'll be live with that town hall meeting unless we can't get drivers. So please, please email me, Sergio at the rideshare guy.com. You know, if we can't get big city drivers, which I cannot understand why we can't. I mean, come on, right? There's millions of drivers out there. One, two, three, maybe we'll show up. Um, if we can't do it, we may switch to dates. Small city first, big city next. But for those two weeks, we're doing the town hall. If we do it with one driver, we're going to do it with one. If we do it with 10, we're going to do it with 10. That's it. But well, please, we're going to keep the, uh, the small city uh, uh, at the 19th. Okay. Um, just because that's what people are are yeah, knowing no, and they've right. agreed Sounds to. Yeah, um, that's so true. if if for some reason we can't get next week for for our larger cities, um, so make sure you hit hit us up. Uh, but if Please. we can't, maybe we will switch it to the following week if we can get more people. But um, so instead of the nineteenth, uh, yeah. you know, switching it between the two, um, it would just go to the week after the nineteenth, which would be the twenty sixth. Yep. Uh, so I agree. Yeah, with that being said, All smash right. that like button. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next time. Be safe. Bye now.